If you want to get your brows microbladed, tattooed, you want to watch this video. Or if you just had it done, you want to know how to take care of it, you want to watch this video. Or you had a brow tattooed a long time ago, it's changed a little bit, the color is turned a little different, then you want to watch this video. So stick with me and I'm going to show you how to take care of your tattoo and see if this is for you. Hey everybody, it's Jasmine, your brow expert. Thank you so much for joining me. You know, I've been shaping eyebrows for over 25 years and I'm still at the Anastasia Brevity Hill Salon. So thank you for your trust. Some of you have come and allowed me to do your eyebrows. So thank you for that. But what you may not know is that I did microblade and tattoo eyebrows for about three or four years. So I know this area a little bit, but so much has changed. It's been a long time since I've done that. And I'll share a little bit towards the end why I no longer uh, tattoo eyebrows. But since I've been shaping eyebrows for this long, I've seen all sorts of different brow shapes brow inks that have changed color. So I know how to deal with this area. I'm I'm an expert in this area. So this is why I want you to see this video before you're thinking about getting your brows tattooed. Or if you already did and you wanna learn how to deal with the one, with the brow tattoo that you have. Um, and my experience, my brows are tattooed. I have no makeup on my eyebrows. So it's been a really good thing for me, but I'll tell you why I did it. I'm going to go over a few of the photographs of brow tattoos and what you need to look out for. And I'll share with you also towards the end, just some techniques that are out there to remove the tattoo. So stick with me and you guys, let's get into it. So this model right here is a really good example as to why a tattoo, brow tattoo is beneficial. Now, in, uh, it's technically called uh, microblading nowadays, or at least most of you guys know that as the brow tattoo microblading, which just bas basically means it's the technique where it's hair strokes manually done with the hand and a little tool. Um, and so, and then there's nano brows where it's a similar technique, but it's with the machine. So there's so many things out there now. A uh, brow tattoo is just something easy for me to say because technically that's what it is. You're pushing ink under underneath the skin. There is that semi-permanent, they call it, or permanent, of course, but there's no such thing as really semi unless, um, unless you're really just barely scratching the surface and you're not even going that deep in the skin. Not that deep, but just slightly underneath the skin. And even then, it'll still just kind of wear off over time. But if it goes too deep, it does um, cause different types of problems. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, so this model... Obviously, it's perfect for her, right? Because she is mature, so we don't get any more hair, right? Um, so, unfortunately. And we lose more hair over time, so right towards the end here, she doesn't have any hair. And she wanted to learn, or at least have some shape, uh, even if it's not... Um, even if it's something that she can use as a stencil, because I told her that it's although it's beautifully done, and this is actually done by me, but it was done so long ago. I don't even know what year this is, but anyway, um, you can tell by the photograph, it's not perfect. Uh, so anyway, the the tattoo is, is well done, but it's also called a soft tap tattoo technique tattoo. Whereas back then, uh, that was uh, uh, pretty popular. So that's what I did. It's just the needles have like a little bit more, a little bit more of like a rounder look where it just kind of gives it more of a, of a powdery look. It's still, you know, it's still done nowadays here and there, but, um, and sometimes it's lightly done with a little bit of hair strokes over to give it more of a natural look. But, um, this just really gives her a shape. So it allows her to frame her face, and it's, it's also easy for her to fill them in once the tattoo kind of fades away. Uh, and in her case, I told her, well, it also will get a little bit thinner. Once you get your pr uh, tattoo freshly done, it's fuller, it puffs up, because obviously you traumatized your skin a little bit, so it's a little bit wider. And your tattoo ta uh, artist would give you all the ins and outs of what to expect, what to do uh, before and after. So I won't get too much into that. Um, but this is why I love the brow tattoo, especially for someone like her where just framed her face beautifully, right? And the ink is well done as far as the, the color. Um, but you know, that changes over time. Just, I just want you to keep in mind that you're putting uh, an ink in your skin, right? So that 
will alter over time a little bit. Again, I'll go go into a little bit more of the color later, but it's not it's not real hair, obviously. So right, it's not going to give you that kind of hair color look. It's it's like makeup in a way. You you're going to see a little bit that there's makeup on your eyebrows. So and that's what this is just doing. But it's offering a shape, and that's why I love this. Um, this reason why you get them tattooed. Now here's another one that I really like. I also did, probably because why? that's why I like it. <laughs> no, but anyway, this is actually also a little fuller than it's gonna end up being because it's puffed up. It's gonna be much uh, thinner than than uh, the way it looks from the before and after. It's, it's a big difference, right? And a lot of us have that kind of hook up in the front. Um, important thing about a lot of these before and afters is that they have a little bit of hair up in the front. When you don't have any hair up in the front and you tattoo that area, it just becomes more unnatural. It looks more of a, like a stamp, which is why that microblading became really popular with the hair strokes. Um, just keep in mind that even though there's hair strokes and there's a little bit of skin coming through, that eventually bleeds out and it looks more like a powdery look. So your hair stroke does not stay like hair strokes over time. So you want to also remember that. I might say keep that in mind a lot. So I'm going to try to refrain from that. Anyway, so this is just a really good example as to she's not going to get any more hair, hair underneath that front pocket, um, especially underneath that area. And she really wanted a, a shape that she can also fill them in over time and have some sort of shape where if she wants to, um, I don't know, just walk around with a little bit more fullness, this is what it's gonna give her. But I also did tell her that, you know, the ink is gonna change a little bit over time as well. Especially when you're Asian, like myself, we have a lot of melanin in our skin, so. And back then, the tattoo inks weren't as great as it is now, so um, if you guys are thinking about getting it done, you're you're in a good, good time now, because there's so many things out there that are so much better. But this one just really came out nicely. But um, I probably, if I did it now, if tattooed their eyebrows now, I probably would go even thinner than what I did for her. But she really loved it and I was really happy that she liked it. So this is another really good example as to why it's beneficial, right? So great example. And now this tattoo that I'm showing you here, there's not a before and after in this one because I didn't do this um, do this tattoo. She, I told her that it is well done. She actually don't mind, didn't mind her tattoo, but she didn't like the way it, um, the color, the tattoo that is, that's faded away into this kind of ashy tone. Because as you can see, she's got a little bit more of an ashier, um, more of a blonde, hair color and you can see she wants her brows to be a little bit warmer and above the brows you can see a slight gray hue to it um i don't know if you can but hopefully you can and it's it's i told her that the shape is actually really good she's really lucky a lot of brow tattoos that i see that is shaped wrong I mean, you can't go home and wash it off, right? So you're kind of stuck with that. And so that's why it's really important you go to a good person. But, and the front of the, her eyebrows, she actually has a little bit more hair than the rest of her eyebrows. So that's why it works. That's why it looks a little bit more on the natural side. It doesn't look like a stamp up in the front of her eyebrow. Now, if it looks like more of a stamp towards the end of the eyebrow, that's okay. It looks more realistic than right up in the front, right? And it's actually thinner and it goes up a little higher. Hi. I told her that the shape is great. It's right where it needs to be because as we age, our brows kind of fall down a little bit because the temples right here recede. So it just, everything starts dragging down, you know, <laughs> everything, unfortunately. So you want the brows to be lifted a little bit. And so I told her that it's in a great spot. And so she was really happy to hear that. So this is something that um, that's why I want you to remember to seek out for a brow artist that's going to do a tiny bit thinner, maybe. Um, it, unless you have a lot of space on your eyelid and you have really skinny eyebrows and you're always going to fill them in really full. You know, that's that maybe that might work. But again, the tattoos will move. That's something that I'll talk a little bit more about. Here's another really good example. Now, this is a really pretty curved eyebrow, right? But if you look up, you don't have to look that close because I'm zooming in here. I've, um, you can see all the faded ink underneath. Now it's actually faded 
okay. Like her natural hair color is pretty dark. And so it's faded a little bit on the ashier tone. And this is how you want it to fade away. You don't want it to turn to blue or red, of course. You want it to fade away like this. And she's got a permanent stencil. She can just, you know, go over right in that spot or pencil just right in the underneath pocket. And she's got a good shape. It's fuller. And so this is what you want from your brow tattoo. But it's still going in conjunction with her natural brow shape. That's another important thing to remember. You don't want to go too different. Don't go to an artist and say, I don't like my eyebrows. I want it tattooed just like this or show them a picture. If it doesn't work with your bone structure, you don't want to do that. You want to do that with makeup so you can wash it off later, right? But you don't want to do that with tattoo. Very, very important. So that's a really good example. So the reason why I love the tattoos that gives it a background. It it creates that permanent stencil, right? Um, all the things that I've touched. Um, and here's another fun thing is that it uh, doesn't wash away, right? So when you go on a holiday and you, especially when you're going somewhere tropical and you're gonna go um, in, in the water and you wanna come out looking like you're not washed out. So, and if you don't have any eyebrows and we all know that waterproof makeup or water resistant does come off a little bit. So if you are going to get your brows tattooed, your, te your technician will tell you that you can't go into chlorine water or, or just even water period uh, right after you have it done. You're going to have to wait a, a few weeks, maybe as long as over a month before you get, especially if, uh, before you get into chlorine water or salt water that can, um, you know, hinder the, the healing process as well as, you know, over time, uh, that ink might change a tiny bit. So you want to make sure that you take some uh, measures in protecting that ink, uh, like sunblock makeup that can also protect your ink. So keep that in mind. If you're a swimmer, I don't know if this is for you, especially if you're really into swimming and you're like, I, I need my brows tattoo. You're going to have to hold off on swimming for a very long time. <laughs> So that's something to know, right? But they would share all this with you. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the colors, right? That I'm going to just talk about the two extreme colors, the pink, red, or the grayish blue. Um, but this one is actually not bad. I told her that, you know, um, it could turn really, really red. So yours faded away into a pretty good color. Her shape is just a little off and I could probably guarantee that when she first had it done, it was a little bit more symmetrical. But this is what I mean by you wanna go a little bit on the thinner side because when your uh, bone structure changes or, or your skin moves around a little bit or fillers or Botox, you don't want you wanna be careful when you do that, but your face just changes, right? And so your ink is gonna move where it changes. You gotta be careful about that, which is why I suggest going a little bit thinner. Um, and her ink has turned a little bit on the pinker side. Very easy to counteract that. If this is you, if this is your skin tone, and if you know Anastasia Beverly Hills makeup, you wanna go a little bit on the taupey side, very ashy, to kind of tone down that little pink but you don't want to have to cover too much. I told her that we're not gonna cover the front too much because you want a little bit of that skin to come through. Even if a little bit of uh, that flush tone comes through, it looks it's gonna look more natural as opposed to, again, a dark color up in the front. It just looks like a stamp. You want it to be darker towards the end, but not so much up in the front. But it's really about just kind of reshaping your eyebrows a tiny bit. But um, if you wanna know the after of this one, I, um, I did this, few weeks ago the same model and how to fill and shape the eyebrows to where it looks a little bit more believable but um yeah so the pink if you have this flush tone you want to use taupey with the skin tone if you have my skin tone with this light color then you want to use something like ash brown which is what i'm going to show you in just a second so taupey is the best color for this skin tone and brow hair uh if you're a little bit on the darker side and the pink has turned a little bit uh darker then you want to go medium brown. So again, I'm going to just touch on mostly the, or all of the Anastasia Beverly Hills products. So, um, you know, cause I've been with her for so long and she's a brow guru, right? You guys know this by now, right? So her products are one of the best in the industry. So it, I'm not cheating you away from some of the really good colors. So, and if you have something that you really like and it's very ashy, then go for it, try that out, but make sure it's ashy. Okay, so here's the extreme case where it's turned red. She has um, olive skin like me. It's obviously very red. So if you have this tattoo that's turned this color and you wanna cover that, 
and you don't you don't have the funds or the time to get that removed you want to use something that's very ashy a little bit on the darker side pomade is what i suggest because it's that creamy texture um dip brow where it's really going to cover well now she does have a tiny bit of hair up in the front which is why the front looks a little bit darker that's going to be beneficial for her so you're going to want to use ash brown you're going to want to use granite there's there are a few colors that you can use it's not just one these have no red in this pigment so it's going to really just kind of tone that down almost take it away if she just puts it right on it's going to look solid because her tattoo is also solid. She barely has any hair and it grows straight down. So there's going to be a lot of gaps. I told her to play with it, um, but definitely ash brown, granite. That's the color you want to use. Now, if you really want to take away the red completely, you can go to any uh, beauty supply that sells like old age or prosthetic type of makeup. Those are the places that has these tints. Um, I used to work for MAC Cosmetics as a makeup artist, and they used to sell these little tints. I don't know if they still do, but I, they might, um, where there's co it's color corrections. And so that would completely take away the pink or the blue. So look for that. If you go to these beauty supplies, they should be able to find you the best color for that if you want to completely take that away if you have something special to go to so that's something really good to look into but anything ashy okay so here's not a, it's not an extreme case but this brow tattoo is beautifully done uh and it's turned a little grayish more on the bluish gray you can see a little hint of blue but it's more on the gray side and it's actually faded away into a pretty good color she's had this tattoo for a while um, the tattoo shape, I would have probably gone a little bit thinner, but it's still beautiful. She's a makeup artist actually, so she's going to be able to work around it quite a bit when it changes up over time, but, um, she really likes it. It's, it's something that if you have something like this, but you want to warm up the color again, you want to use something like medium brown. Um, you can also use uh maybe mix it a little bit with an auburn if you're using pomade you can mix the color because it's that creamy color right so you'd be like an artist oil paint and just mix it a tiny bit and see if that's the right color for you again if you go to these makeup counters they should be able to help you find the correct color but i suggest medium brown tiny bit of maybe auburn but medium brown chocolate we also have chocolate that can help as well just to warm up this tattoo but this is just a really good idea of a great shape but you can probably go a little bit on the thinner side on this one i hope you're getting some really good information on this but um i hope i'm not going too quick but if i am uh, going too quick for you or i've missed something or you have more questions during this please give me the comment and i'll try to get back to you on that as well uh, uh, to your question that is so here's another tattoo that i did that that um, I think turned out really well. It's, you can see the before and after where it's the before she has no hair at all uh, towards the end. This is a really good example as to why this can look very natural because the front, I didn't tattoo uh, barely anything up in the front. I allowed her hair to come through. Um, so that way she has brows the rest of the, um, on the face. So it's gonna be even actually thinner than this. It's just freshly done. But I didn't want to go too crazy and go too thick. She just wanted some sort of shape so it frames her face. She doesn't look completely washed out. And she didn't know how to fill them in. So I'm giving her a guide here. And it's going to look even more natural once this ink fades away. I did tell her that it might look even lighter. But it's really about giving her the best um, background, really. So that's just a really quick example as to why this type of technique works, especially if you don't get much tattooed up in the front. Um, here's something that I wanted you to quickly look at. I um, This is a really good brow artist. I'll give her information in the descriptions below. She's located in Los Angeles. Now, because I live in Southern California, I only know a few artists in this area. Um, so if you have an artist that you like or you think you might go to, let me know and I'll tell you if, you, if that might be the right person. Go over to Instagram. Instagram has the best um, resource and the tattoo artists in your area because it's like their portfolio. So if they don't have a good portfolio in there, you may want to keep scrolling down. And, and if you're really serious about this and you live in an area where there, there isn't a good artist, just make a trip out of it because it's 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 a tattoo right you want to go to someone really good so you want to invest that time right if you can invest some of that money 
right? Okay, so, and this is just a really good example as to full brow a microblading tattoo, but she actually has um, a big brow of herself. I mean, she, <laughs> big brow, she has full brows of her own. Um, she just has a little bit of that nano, whereas hair strokes with the machine, a little bit of, um, she probably has a little bit of the powdered ink underneath as well, but it's just beautifully done. It's actually not solid, so when it shrinks up and fades away, it's really just gonna blend in beautifully with her eyebrows, and it's not sh um, altering her shape too much. But I really just wanted you to look at this because this is a really good art. She actually has touched up my eyebrows, so I've, I do trust her. So this is someone that you wanna look into. Again, her information will be in, in the descriptions. So now I'm gonna talk about what you wanna see gal for, just quickly giving you an idea as to what I mean by you wanna go a little bit on the thinner side. This model obviously has thin eyebrows and she's not gonna, she never will get that full looking eyebrow. And she didn't have full brows to begin with. So you don't want uh, like a full ink tattooed brow in, in a small space or when you have your own um, thin eyebrows. It's just going to look artificial, guys. So keep that in mind. Very important to remember. You want to just go a little bit fuller, right? Um, and just give you that kind of background. Here's another really good example. Um, if she had really full, thick tattoo eyebrows, and when it fades away, it would look really, really bad. So I told her, so smart to have this a tattoo. Now, obviously, it's really thin. All she has to do is just fill around it. But she has, if she didn't have that little thin tattoo ink, I promise you guys, she would have had just a little couple of strands and that's it. <laughs> she would have looked like she has no brows at all. So she does, as you can see with this, you can see a little bit of frame on her, right? And she can too, so it's easy for her to go over that. That's another thing to just be really mindful. Unless you go to like some amazing tattoo artist that can go a little bit fuller, you know how to work around makeup. That's a different story, but just, this is something that I just encourage, especially mature women, encourage them to do because you don't want it to look funny <laughs> towards the end, right? I'm gonna just show you a couple of shots, a close-up shot of myself. Uh, I don't know if you can see right here in the video, my brows, but it looks pretty good. I. I can get away with not putting any makeup on sometimes, but I try not to. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, excuse me for, uh, for my voice. I, I'll tell you why, but um, as I'm showing you a close-up picture of myself. So this, um, it's a little bit darker actually. The photograph is showing my tattoo to be darker, but it's important for you to see that my brows are uh, a little bit on the fuller side. I might have wanted just a tiny bit thinner, but that's okay because I know how to work around it. But um, it's faded away. This actually, believe it or not, this ink is about, oh, I don't know, about maybe six years old. I haven't touched it up since then because um, I don't mind it to be on the lighter side. So even if it's faded and I see some gaps here and there, I don't mind about that. That's something I want you to remember. Don't keep running back and going, oh, I see a gap here, I need to fill that in, or it's too light, because you get used to it over time and then you feel like it's gotten too light. You're muddying the waters the more you get the tattoo over and over and over and over again. You'd have to get it completely removed and to see those hair strokes again, because that does bleed through you don't see the strokes as as perfectly as you see them when you first had them done so that's something to remember this one you can really see that open area the gap right at that arch area now that's something that some of you might be tempted going I want to fill that in but I don't do that I just leave it alone because I don't want to traumatize the skin anymore remember you're gonna get these permanent scratches that will obviously never go away and there are going to be areas that will never go away. So, you know, if I really wanted to, I could like look into maybe removing them, but you can't spot remove an area as well. Unfortunately, you'd have to get the whole thing removed. And even then it's not 100% like a brand new skin, right? You're always going to have some kind of scarring here and there. I mean, some of them are so faint that you won't really notice it. But you're just going to see that, you know, um, and, you know, my process was was long because I first got those my tattoo done, gosh, way over decades ago. So you can imagine I was really scared because I was doing eyebrows. So I'm like, oh, my God, I need to be really, really good. 
but I didn't have any hair. I had a tiny bit up in the front, but I didn't have any hair anywhere else. I had strands that were going straight down. So it was just something that I, I decided to do for myself. And I thought, worst case scenario, uh, I'm a makeup artist where I could cover it. <laughs> Not the best way to look at it, but that's kind of how I was looking at it back then. But um, so just, just remember that you're really just overdoing it if you're getting it done over and over again. So I don't suggest that. The process is two processes. Again, your brow technician will give you the ins and outs, before and afters, what to do before and after. Um, and I just touched on earlier about not swimming or doing any of that. I actually put makeup on my eyebrows. This is something I want you to remember. I remind my clients all the time, the ones that have had their tattoo done, just because you get your brows tattooed doesn't mean that you're like, okay, now I never have to do anything to it. Put some sunscreen on there. Definitely put a little bit of makeup, even if it's a tiny bit, because then you're adding some block. I will. I promise you that if you do this, you will have your ink a little bit longer and lasting longer, like mine. It doesn't change color as easy. Now, if it turns really red, that means that it went. That person went in too deep. If it turns really purple or blue, that means that person went in too deep. That's not the way it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be lightly underneath the first layer of the skin. So that's why you want to be careful who you go to. So you want to make sure that you put a little bit of makeup. Okay, so I can't stress that enough because it really prolongs your eyebrow tattoo. You're protecting it, especially if you're out and about a lot. The sun does a lot of that damage. If you bleach your eyebrows, that will change up the ink. So be careful about that as well. So there are a few things that you want to be mindful to, but I encourage all my clients put some sort of makeup, pencil, uh, pomade, powder a little bit, dust a little bit of powder over it, something just to protect it. So, or, and you know, if, you, if you're not going to do that, you're not good at that, just wear a hat or something. So I just, that is something that the most important thing that I want you to remember. Last thing is the tattoo removal. I'm also going to give you in the descriptions a person that I trust that you can go to to completely remove the tattoo. Like I say, it's just not 100%, but she will give you more details as to what it's all about. But there's so many different techniques now. Um, there's this thing called, well, first of all, you know the laser tattoo removal, right? That's been around for a long time. That hurts a little bit. <laughs> I've tried it on my body, that is. And um, it's, it's not the most pleasant thing. Even though they use numbing cream, it hurts a lot. You have to go through multiple sessions just to get a lot of that removed. So that's something to consider. And it gets expensive, right? So that's another downside too. It gets a little costly here. Um, there is something called uh, the magnetic tattoo removal, which uh, it's, it's, um, it's more comfortable, she said. There is no numbing cream. But just remember that even with the magnetic tattoo removal, um, and laser, it, what it does is it doesn't take the ink off. It actually disperses the ink. It, it, your body actually absorbs it. And so that's where it goes. <laughs> you, in, in case you're wondering what, what that's all about, maybe not. She also uses another procedure called undo. Now you do need uh, some numbing cream for this. And all of this is uh, going to take some sessions and she will know after doing your first session, how many sessions you need to uh, to take most of the ink off. The um, She will also give you the pros and cons of the magnetic, the, the technical undo, uh, why one would be beneficial for you. And you can decide what's more for you. And so, and then there's there's some more coming down, down the pike about uh, the tattoo removal. And so she, I think, does about two or three different types of techniques to remove the tattoo. So, and these methods are great now and they really do work if this is for you. Some of you probably have more hair than you thought you could ever have. And so you wanna get that tattoo removed, that's for you. So um, that's the decision that, that you gotta make that I'm here to help you to make that. Okay, so, and yeah, I hope I've covered as much as I think I covered. Again, please give me the comments. Ask me if I, um, if you need some more answers to certain questions about your tattoo or if you're thinking about getting it done. So just real quickly, I wanna talk about why I no longer tattoo eyebrows. I don't tattoo eyebrows because, for a few reasons, but um, my passion, 
uh, fell more into educating the public. Um, all of you out there, some of you are watching me from a different country. And so I, I like the teaching part. I love still shaping. I love being able to see that before and after. But, you know, and you get that with the tattoo, but it's a longer process. There's more things to it. And um, as much as I love it, because obviously I have it on my eyebrows, it's not something I deeply felt passionate for. And, uh, and my passion is still just shaping eyebrows. That's why I'm still at the salon. And it's really rolling over to more of the education process. For some of you that might be wanting to get into the industry and shaping eyebrows and working in a salon or just freelance out there, um, but the tattoo world, since I stopped doing it, has changed so much. Amazing artists out there. So when you get out of the game for a while, I'd have to like get back into it. It takes a little bit longer. I am kissing 60, which is scary to say. And so um, I know it's it's weird to say that. But anyway, um, it's, it's also labor intensive and my health is also really important for me. And that's another reason. So I just want to stay as healthy as possible because it's, it's very taxing on the body um, performing this art that is. So and so I'm just leaving it to all the amazing young artists out there that are really doing a great job. And I'm cheering some of them on, which is great. And again, I'm here to help you guys in getting as much information as possible. So thank you so much for joining me here. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And let me know what you thought about this video. If it has helped you out, definitely share this with anyone that you know that is either thinking about getting their brows tattooed or has already done so and doesn't know how to deal with their tattoo shape or the ink that's changed. So let me know if you share them, share this with them. <laughs> Thank you so much and I will see you guys next week.